Hi, welcome to the Shiko SAT review series. And uh, this topic we're going to talk about is the statistics. And uh, this is a statistic part one. We're going to talk about is the distribution and the summary statistics. So in this uh, unit, we're going to cover the mean, median, mode, some summary statistics, and then the range, variance, standard deviation. Then we're also going to take a look at the distribution type, like it's a symmetric, skewed to the right, skewed to the left. How are those distribution types going to affect the mean, median, mode, or range variances behavior? Okay, so this is our second video. So the first video, we did a brief uh, uh, kind of the review or lecture about what are the statistics, summary statistics and the distribution. Then we did a, like a five problems from the worksheet. So today we're going to finish the worksheets for the statistic and uh, involving the distribution and the summary statistics. So before we continue, um, do the worksheets, let's just uh, kind of go back to do a quick review of what we did in the first video. So to kind of refresh the memory, and uh, you know, I strongly recommend you if you don't remember or you know, go back to the first video and uh, so you will kind of make sure you understand the things we discussed in the first video. And this is just a quick review so we can go to do the problem. So the second part of the worksheet. Okay, so like the for the first things here, right? So the we talk about uh, is the, so this is the summary. So we said uh, the summary statistics has two parts. One is for the center, and the one is for the spread, right? So for the centers here, be careful here, right? So we have uh, you know the so the things here we have three things. We have a mean, median, and the mode. So we define the mean is really just the average. The median is the middle one. When you arrange the number from the smallest to the largest, the median was just the middle, middle one. Then the mode is the one, one number, or it could be two numbers, or could be three numbers, who happen most frequently here. And uh, now, you know, from the SAT point, the way the typical type of the problem for the mean, and uh, if they really want you to find the mean, then the data set is not going to be a huge data set. It will just be like a few numbers, right? So you just add them together and then divide by total how many numbers there. But one of the typical problems I saw it happen again and again in the SAT is like they will give you the mean value here say so, hey for these six numbers the mean value is this one then one of the numbers the raw data is missing then they say what is that value so that's basically they just want you to know you know if uh, like the example we show you here right so mean is five you want to find the x and then i know the mean is you add them divided by five so the total when you add them it should be five times five is 25 right so that's why I mean, you can minus out all the other numbers. Okay, so that's what is the, the center uh, parameter. So we can use the mean, median, the mode. Then the next thing is here, we say the median, the most frequently happen problems in the SAT, the median, they either give you the number set they already ranked here, and then they will say, hey, what is the median here? Or they will give you a frequency tables here, right? So you know the median is the middle one. So you basically count what is the total frequencies, and where is the middle one. And then the, we also did the three graphs here. Those three graphs give you a very important information. So we'll tell you the distribution. What is the distribution type where it has to do with the mean and the median relation? So if your distribution is symmetric, then the typical, then the very possible mean will be very close to median. If your distribution have a long tail to the right, see like in here, you have a long tail to the right, then that means we call this a skewness to the right. So if this is the situation, then the mean typical is greater than median. The reason why, because those large numbers 
to the average will kind of inflate the mean a little bit. Now, if you have a tail to the left, then we say this type of distribution is skew to the left. So for the skew to the left, then the mean typical is a little smaller than the median. So it's the same reason because those small values and when you find the average of it, it will make the average is getting a little smaller here. All right. Then the next ones here is like that we talk about is how to evaluate the spread. Is how wide your data, you know, are the data all cluster to one place or they kind of spread out. So we have three things we use. We say it's a range, right? Range is pretty easy. You just use your largest value in your data set minus the smallest value in your data set. Then the whatever the value in between, I don't care, right? So that's what the that's what is range means here. Then what is the variance? The variance, the, the formula I wrote there is a summation is minus x bar squared over minus y. It looks very complicated, and most likely you know that they're not going to ask you to find the variance but they will ask you the meaning of the variances here. So the variance is really, if you take a look at the graph I did here, I say, hey, here's the mean for this data set. So the variance is just each individual number, each individual numbers, right? So how far they are away from the mean, like, like this one, and like this one, like this one. So how far away they are from the means there. That's what we mean. The, then you square that. The reason why we want to square it is because you don't want the positive and negative to cancel, right? So that's what we call the variance. Then the standard deviation is just the square roots of the variance. So let's take a look at the distribution types here. So here, let's we'll tell you, you know, like if you take a look at this three distribution, this is the ones, right? This is the distribution. So what happens here? They are very, very tight. They are close together, right? So it's kind of clustered together. So for this distribution compare, I know this one, we're going to have the smallest what? Smallest variation, so, right? Then for this ones here, so it's kind of like spreading out. So we know this one is probably the largest the variation because the variation is the, the distance to the means, right? So it's kind of going very wide. Then this one is in between these two. So the standard deviation or variance probably is in between the largest and the smallest. All right. So this is a quick review. And uh, so the, if you want a little bit more detail, maybe you can go back to the video number one at the beginning. So we did this lectures here. Okay, so now let me go to the, our worksheets and uh, let's start. All right, so in here, and uh, last time we stopped uh, at the Problem number six here. Okay, so let's now we finish number five. So we start at number six here. Okay, so we say Andrew and Maria each collect the six rocks, and the masses of rocks are showing in the table. The mean value of the mass, the rock Maria collect here, is going to be 0.1 kilogram greater than the mean mass of the rock that Andrew collect. So what is the value of x here? So in here, so the first thing is here, you know, Maria have the one missing here. So let's take a look at the mean for Andrew, because I know the Maria is one more, right? Point one more, right? So the, now the mean for Andrew, so basically what is the mean again? Do you remember? Is it just we add those number together? So it's 2.4 plus 2.5 plus 3.6 plus 3.1 plus 2.5 plus 2.7, right? And how many we add in six here? Like I say, if the SAT will want you to find the mean, typical will be pretty easy, you know, like only a few numbers. They're not going to give you a number with 20 or 30 data points, right? So in here, that's why here, if you put it into your calculator, so the mean for the Andrew is 2.8. And then the problem is say Maria is 0.1 greater than the Andrew. So what is the Maria's 
So what is Maria's means here? The Maria's mean is equal to what? 2.9. So remember, right? So I know the mean and I want to find the missing number. So what is the mean we said? Mean is the average, right? So you divide by six. So that's why I can say, so the in here, if the 2.9 times six, right? It will be equal to the X plus 3.1 plus 3.7, 2.7 and the plus 2.9 plus 3.3 .3 plus 2.8 right okay so now that's why you can get so now in here you can try to find a solve it so what is x here so you can solve the x here is 2.6 right so remember right during my review i said one of the typical problem the SAT will give you, they were giving the mean and then there was some missing value here. So how do you do that? So that's why the mean is if you add everything divided by how many number. So this one's here, right? So this is like 2.9 times six. That is just what? That's the sum, right? That's the sum of all your values. And now you just, uh, you know, minus all this number, you will get an X here. All right. Okay, so cool. Okay, now let's take a look at the next one here, right? Okay, so look at this big table. You know, like when you see the SAT, you see those big table, you glance through fast to see what, uh, you know, it's like uh, if you see a mean variance, low things, that means you know, you know, it's kind of using the statistical formula for the mean to find it. Okay, so let's take a look at number seven. They said, I have uh, 20 contestants, okay, for the three days and the answer five questions in order to win a prize. Each contestant received one point for each correct answer. Then the number of the co you know, contestants received a given score on each day is showing. And uh, now in here, they said, uh, what is the contestants uh, Okay, so they say, what is the mean score, right? So catch the keyword for all the contestants on the first days here, all right? So now in here you say, okay, the contestant for the first days, right? So that means these are the data so here. I have a two, have a five points, three, have a four points. So what is my total points here? So the First things here, I need to know the total points, right? Because I know the mean is equal to what? Me is equal to you add all them up and divide by n. Okay, so the total points, so two contestants got a five. So what this one here is a 10. Then the second one here is three contestants got a four. So how many points total? 12, right? And then the, this is just four. Okay, so now four contestants get a three. So total how many points is 12, correct? Then the last the, here, the six contestants get a two points. So it's another what? It's another 12, right? Two contestants get one point. So it's what? Get two. Then the three contestants get a zero. So it's a zero. So if you add all of them together, so it's like, oh, here's 12, 12, 12. And uh, also 48 here, right? So this is the total points, right? Total score, then the mean. So the what is the mean here? Mean is the total. So we have is 48 here. Okay, so here is a possible mistake. The, the place the, so you need to divide by what? You need to divide by 20s, right? Because you total have 20 contestants. So the common mistake I saw students make, what do they put here? They divide by six. No, it's not a six. A six is just six different category, but you have a total of 20 contestants. So the average test score is what? It's 2.4 here. Get it? Okay. So to be very careful, right? So because you want to find the, you know, the average test score for the contestants, right? Okay, so that's good. Okay, and that's number eight here. So the, okay.
Okay, so in here they said uh, this is the number of the states with 10 or more electoral votes here. So in the 2008, they say 21 states with 10 or more electoral votes. So as shown in the table, now what I'm looking for here. So I'm looking for, oh, what is the median number the, the electoral vote for the 21 state? Oh, the medians, right? So I'm looking for what? The medians here. And the total, how many I have here? Total, I have what? So total we have how many? So total we have, uh, so total, we have uh, 21 states, right? 21 states here. And here they have ranked for you. So the where is the median? So if you list, this is the 21 states. So this is the 21. Total here, from here to here is 21. So where is the median? The median will be what? Median here will be this number at what positions will be at the 11th positions, right? Why? Because then here got a 10 and here got a 10. So the 11th position is the what? Is the middle position, so it's the median. So now let's count here. So here is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the 10th position is in this category. So what is my median here? Ha, median is what? So the median is 15. Did you see here? Because it have a 21, you know, 21 states. So the median one will be the middle, right? So the, that means the 11th position will be. So that's why you count the 11. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, right? So like 11 is here, right? So that's why it's a 15 here. Okay, let's take a look at problem number nine. Like I said, those problems are typical. It's pretty, it's not too hard here, right? Okay, so this is the age of the 20 students enrolled in the college. It's 18, 19, 20, 21 here, okay? And uh, now they want to see what is the uh, following, give the correct order of the mean, median, and the vote, all right? So, okay, so from here, this one's here, right? So if you do a quick, uh, so if you say this is the 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, then 30s, right? So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you take a look here, right? So you will see from the 18, I have a six. So, so this is your bar here. 19, I have a five. So here is your bar here. And the 20, I have a four. One, two, three, four. So 20, I have a four here. 21, I have a two. So 21, I have a two. 22, I have one, so one and the one. So I know, so the, this one's here, right? So I know what type of the distribution I have here. I have a skew to the what? I have a skew to the right, right? So do you remember if a skew to the right? So what happens here? So mean and the median, so where could it be the mean? So skew to the right, right? Let's we say here, the mean could be in here and the median could be here, correct? Because, uh, you know, because the mean going to be kind of affected by those a little bit bigger numbers here, right? So I know the mean going to greater than median because of the skew to the right, correct? Okay, so mean going to write in the median. So what is the mode? The mode, right? So the mode is what is the most frequently happen. So what is the most frequently happen is here, right? So it's a six, so it's 18. So the mode is in here. 
So this is the mold. So the mold going to be what is the smallest one. So medium going to greater than mold because in this situation, the mold is the highest one, it's the smallest number. So we know the answers here will be mean is the largest one, median and the mold, right? So that's what will be A here. So as you can see, you know, you look at the distribution, so you know, oh, distribution is skewed to the right. So remember we say skewed to the right, and then this is going to be our mean. The mean is going to be a little bit, uh, what, a little bit bigger than the median. Then the mode here is because most frequently here is the six, so it's the smallest ones here, okay? And uh, so let's take a look. I want to mention one thing here. We need to be careful here. You know, it's mode is, it doesn't always has to be the smallest number. So for example, if you have a distribution goes something like this. Okay, so like for this here, so this one's here, right? So this will be your mode here. Right, so for this one, this is a skew to the right also. So the mean still is greater than median, but the medians here, you know, probably will be very close to the mode. It doesn't mean the mode are always the smallest ones here. The mode is will be the one that happen most frequently here. So the mode probably still less than the median, but they should be pretty close. Maybe the median is here, okay, and maybe the mean is here. Okay, it's just I want to make sure you don't always say, hey, the median is a small store and not necessary. All right. So like if they, they put here, if they say, how about if this is a seventh, right? So the second one is a little higher, then the mode will be seven. All right. Okay, so let's I just want to mention, you know, talk about that. So we're not uh, make a mistake, All right? Okay, so now let's take a look at the next one, the problem number 10 through here. Okay, so the problem number 10, this is, those are the pretty good problems to try to test your understanding about those summary statistics, all right? So they say the weight for 15 horses in the stable will report and the mean, median, and the range and the standard deviation for the data will find. So they calculate the mean, median. The horse with the lowest one reported the weight was fine and true actually weight 10 pounds less. Okay, so let's see, highlight. The horse with the lowest pound was found to actually, actually weight 10 pounds less than its report weight. What the value going to remain unchanged here, right? What are the value going to remain unchanged here? So let's see here. So this one, so this I have 14 horses here. Right, so I have, I calculate the mean, standard deviation, all these things here. Then they say, hey, this one's here, the lowest weight, you know, in fact, uh, the true weight, uh, the, these horses here, have to be here. All right, so it has to be here. And then all the other horses still have the same weight uh, here. But uh, this one has to be in here because it's uh, actually, it's uh, 10 pounds less than the lowest that they report, all right? So now let's see which one not going to be affected here. Well, is the mean going to be affected? Oh yes, because the mean is you add all them up and then divide by 15. So you add something small number. So of course it will be affected. So this is not the answer. Okay, so now let's take a look at the ranges here. The range is here is the largest one minus the smallest one. So largest one minus smallest one, because smallest one change, will range be affected? Oh yes, this one will be affected. Then the standard deviation will be affected? Yes, because standard deviation, like after you find the means here, for example, if this is the mean, the standard deviations will be you know, the differences for each number to the means here. This one, the mean could change a little bit, but we don't know how much it changes. So the standard deviation could be affected here also. Okay, so now I know the median 
is not going to be effective. Why? Because when I rank those data, these numbers here, the yellow one, the pink one, they still pop purple one, I guess. The yellow and the purple one, they still at the lower rank here. So not going to affect where is the middle, right? So the median is the answer here. Okay. Now let's take a look at number 11 here. <clears throat> so the number 11 here, so they said the table below, above the list the length of the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 round bullhead fish. The outlier measurement is 24. So the, they all measuring the A inch, nine, and this one is 24. It's an arrow, okay? So they say 24 inches is an arrow. And uh, so then they say, of the mean median range of the which will change the most. Okay, so, oh boy. So now they say, which one will change the most if this one is uh, removed here? Okay, okay, so that in here, let's take a look here. Okay, so the change the most, let's see here. Is the mean going to change the most? Well, the mean is a summary of this 21s, right? And uh, now, if you remove the 24, is a summary of the 20. And uh, it will change but it will not change that much. Why? Because 24 here is was averaged out by the other 20. So it will change, it's going to be smaller, but it's not going to be so dramatic, right? So that's why like we said that the most the changes here. So mean is not going to be that dramatic here. Okay, let's take a look at the median. So the median, is a 21, so the median will be the 11th positions, right? So the median, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So here, going to be the median, right? So going to be the median, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, okay. So here is going to be the median. Okay, so now let's say, the, hey, if I remove 20, so that means, uh, I'm only get a 20s, right? I'm only get a 20s observation. So my median going to be somewhere between 12 and 12. So still it's 12, right? Because you have a 20 observation. So median not going to be changed. Then the range is here, okay? So the range is here. It used to be is 24 minus eight, right? So it's a what? It used to be the 24 minus 8 is 16, right? Okay, and now your range will be 16 minus 8, it will be 8. It's almost dropped to a half. So I know the range will be affected if I remove this outlier. And the D is not true. They say they all will change by the same amount. No, that's not true because I, I know mean going to be changed a little bit and median going to with not no changes here, right? So for those type of the problems here, of course you can try to add all them together, try to find the mean, that's, a, that's a, take a lot of time. So that's not the, the purpose of these problems here. They want you just kind of the reason that because you have to remove the 24 because of when you try to find the average is 24. You know, it will affect me, but it's not that much because when you add everything together, right? But when you add everything together, you divide it by 21. So this number going to kind of, uh, I like to use the word dilute down a little bit, right? By the, because you average it out by 21 numbers here. Okay, so it's not going to be that affecting. So the range is going to affect the most here. Okay, now let's take a look here. All right, so age of first United States president. So the table above lists the age of the first uh, state the president uh, when they start a term. According to the table, oh, they want you to find the mean age here. And so this one's here, so basically, so 
they want to find the means. So this one, basically, what do they want you to do? Find the means, right? So what you need to do, you just need to find the sum, right? So the sums here will just be you add the president's age, so it's 57 plus 62 plus 58 plus 59 and uh, plus da, 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 plus what? Plus 65, right? So if you add them together, and uh, it's 703, all right? Okay, so it's a 703, so the average is here. So the mean is it will just be 703 divided by 12. So this is a 58.58. So did you see here? That's why when you do the means here, you know, it will just give you a simple number. You, so for the 12 number, it's not too big. You should be able to add it very quickly and divide by 12, right? Okay, that's good. Let's take a look, uh, okay? Number 13, let's highlight the things. That's why when you do the SAT exam, try to highlight it. What do they want to find? Hey, they say to determine the mean number of the children per household in the community. And how many I survey? I survey 20 families at a playground. For the 20 family survey, the mean number of the children household is 2.4. Which of the statement must true? Okay, so this is a kind of a, a good questions because they try to test your concept. And um, okay, so they said, uh, so we said uh, the mean number of the children per household in the community is 2.4. I think um, this is a can possible, but uh, they say must be true. It cannot be 100% true. Why? Because you are surveying these 20 families in the playground. For the family, they don't have a children, probably they're not going to the playground. So when you do those survey 20 families in the playground, you probably is the only survey the families and with children, right? So your number probably is a little bit high, right? So some like, especially if some grandparents live in the area, they, all their, you know, their children are already gone, right? So then it doesn't mean you on average, you have 2.4. Okay. Okay, so they said a, a determination about the mean number of the children per household in the community cannot be made because the sample size is too small, okay? And um, 20 is not too small. It's okay sample size. So you cannot say this statement is uh, absolutely correct statement. So 20 is okay sample size, unless you say if you only survey three or four families here, 20 is a reasonable sample size for the, you know, the, for the statistics here, okay? So then the C here, that's why the C will be the correct answer. Because uh, they said the sample method is a flaw and the main review produced the bias estimate of the mean number of the children in the community. So the reason why this is true, because when you do the survey, you only survey in the playground you did not cover the whole population here. So you could have a bias. That's what I say for the people, they don't have a children. For the family, they don't have any kids. So they probably not going to the playground. So your estimation probably is bias, probably is a little higher than the true averages here. So the D, let's say, is not a not a flaw, so that's not true, right? So the C will be the correct answer here. Okay, let's take a look at the number 14 here. Okay, all right, so they said here, number of the goals scored by a soccer team in the 29 games here. So, the, so this is the number of the games, so number of the goals. So let's take a look at what they ask. Right? So let's say based on the graph above, how many of the games 
play? Did Socrates score the goal equal to the median number? Ooh, ooh, okay, so median number. This is my key, right? Okay, so median numbers, right? Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so how many games? 29, so do the same things, right? So here, so median number, all right? So let me see, total I have uh, 29 games here. So da, 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 this is 29. So let me see from here to here, total you have uh, 29 games. Okay, so I'm looking for the median. So let's miss the middle one. So which position will be my middle one? Total is 29. You divide by two is about 14.5, right? So I know the middle position. So what is the positions here? Is the 15th position. Right, because you have a 14 here, you have a 14 here, right? So you add it up, it's a 28. So here, that's why this is the middle one. So it's a 15, right? That means I need to find the goal with the 15, right? So which bar is the 15? Okay, so now let's take a look. First one is eight here. All right, so I have an eight team. Then, oh, yeah, so the, it's not a clear to look like. Huh? All right. So the first ones here have an eight. Then the second ones here is nine. So your A plus nine is a what? It's a 17 here. So that means I have a 17. Okay, so here this is a 17 is equal to A plus nine, right? So that means I have 18 scored one. Then I have 19 scored two. So then the 17 is including the 15th position. So what is my scores here? My scores here is a what? Okay, so my scores here is a two, right? Okay, so that's what is, a, so what is the game? You know, so how many games played did the soccer team score the goal equal to the, you know, the median game? So that means, uh, but here is a 15 games, right? Okay, that's why you got the score is two, it's your median numbers here. All right, let's take a look at number 15. Okay, so the number 15 is here. So international tours arrived in million. So you have 2012, 2013. So the total above show the number of the international tours arrived around to the million. Based on the information, okay? Okay, so now let's take a look at what do we want to find, right? So let's say, based on the information, how much greater the million was the, oh, is the median number of the international tours on the top of the night tours destination in the 2013 and the median in the 2012. Okay, so now I have nine, right? So I have nine. So where is the median? So nine have a median, so it's a fifth, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, it's equally. So this is my median numbers, correct? So the, I have a total nine, and so this will be my median. So how much more is here? Will just be 47.7 minus 46.4. How much here? So it's 1.3 million. You know, like for those type of problem are super easy. As long as you capture the keyword, you know what they are asking for, right? Okay, so number 15.2, they say, the number of international tours arrived in Russia in 2012, right, was 13.5% uh, greater than 2011. Then the number of international tours arrived in, in the Russia was K millions more in the 2012 and 2011. What is the value of the K, well, what did they try to tell me? Okay, so here, Russia, Russia. So let's try to find the Russia here, right? So the Russia is here, 2012 is 24.7, right? 
So 24.7 see here, okay? So, okay, so this one see here. So the 24.7 for the Russia, this is 2012, all right? So they say, so the 24.7, they say is 13.5 more than the 2011. So 24.7 is 13.5% more than the 2011 here, all right? So now they say that if the Russians are here, they are K million more in the 2012 to the 2011, how, what is the K value? Okay, so 2011, right? So whatever is the 2011, I would say X, right? And the 2000 is the, more than that. So that means uh, whatever the 2011 times 1.135, so is equal to 24.7, right? Right, because it's a point 13.5%, so it's more, so it's 1.175. So X here, this is 2011, right? So it will just be 24.7 divided 1.135, so what do you have here? 21.76, all right? So this means this is what? This is 2011, right? So it's 20, so this is the 21.76. So let's say how much more, right? So you use 2012, so it's 24.7 minus 21.76. So what do you have here is a 2.94. So for this problems here, for the student, if they make the mistake is like, a, so I guess uh, here, you know, how to find the number in the 2011, this is the place that most, uh, most likely the student will make the mistakes here, right? So be very careful for those type of the problem. It looks very complicated, it's a lot of wording. So just make sure you read it and highlight the key things they want to find, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at number 16. Okay, so the number 16 is here. The students in a healthy class uh, a uh, health class conduct an experiment of which they record their pulse rate and uh, in the beat per sec per minute, right? Before and after complete a light exercise routine. The dot plot is the results here. Okay, so S1 and uh, R1 is the standard deviation and the range for the first one. And uh, S2 and R2 will be the standard deviation the second one see here. And uh, as you can see first, right? So, you know, when you do those type of the problem, take a look at the scales first. Okay. Okay. So their scales is like, uh, it's they all what? It's kind of like they all shift, right? From the, they all shift like a 24. Right, so from the 80 to the 104, 84 to 108. So they all, it's kind of like the, but it's a constant shift, right? It's a shift of like 24 units here. So remember, right, the standard deviation, right? The standard deviation is how tight they kind of get together, right? How tight they cluster together. So compared to these two, so which is standard deviation? So the, this is the standard deviation S1. So this is the standard deviation S2. So I know that S1 is, uh, they all focus uh, kind of the tied together around these ranges, right? So S2 is kind of more widely spreading out it's here. So I know which one S2 is greater than. Then, okay, so let's take a look at the ranges here. The range is here is the largest one minus the smallest one. So it's 88 minus 56. What is uh, this one here is 32, right? So the same way is here for this one here is just 112 minus 80. So this is 112 minus 80. 
So what is it here? It's 32. It's because the whole thing may shift to 24. Remember that? So if you kind of from here to here, those scales here, right? So they shift 24 pulse per, per minute, right? So it's an after exercise here. So we know in these numbers here, so basically they want to test you is you know how to read the graph. So when they all kind of close together, then the standard deviation is smaller. So in here, so we know the SR1 equal to R2, then S1, you know, the so the S1 equal to what? So it's R1 equal to R2, right? So R1 equal to R2. So, oh, here, this is, okay, so it's this one and this one, right? So R1 equal to R2. Then the A is S1 equal to S2. We know S1 is not equal to S2. S2 has to be greater than S1, but they don't have the choice. So I know it will be this here. All right, so don't get confused for these answers, right? So this one is say S2 greater than S1. Well, so the first part is right. So this is okay. But I know the R1 has to be what? So R1 has to be equal to the R2. So the best answer is part D. Okay, that's it. We have completed uh, these worksheets. Uh, it's, you know that the problem all the problems themselves are very simple, easy problems. But to make sure you know you understand the concept, right? And uh, the calculations are pretty minimal, it's not too much. Like I say, most likely they will ask you to do it, just calculate the mean, find the average. They're not going to ask you to find the standard deviations and the variances here. And, uh, but then the things you need to be aware of is how to interpret it, what that means here, right? And also how do you interpret the ranges here? Okay, and uh, that's it. And uh, it's uh, I'm very uh, glad to be able to finish this unit and uh, hope you get a good understanding about the statistics, summary statistic and the distributions, all right? So have a good day, and I'm looking forward to talk to you. The next topic about the statistic is how to find the probabilities here, all right? Okay, have a good day, and looking forward to talk to you next. Okay, bye.